Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, July 9th, 2024 edition of the Sands and at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today shared a new tool that he learned about at a recent uh, conference. Uh, this uh, tool is kind of intended to be a replacement for Sysmon, but for Linux. Uh, Microsoft actually came out with a Linux version of the original Sysmon tool, but the maintenance of the tool seems to have dropped off somewhat. And that's where this new tool Kunai comes in. And Xavier is talking about a couple use cases. One thing that I'm always interested in is can I link a particular DNS request to a particular process? And that exactly is what this tool is able to do. So for example, as you're triaging your logs and try to figure out if a particular DNS request was triggered maybe by a security tool that uh, was just trying to protect you or maybe by a tool that a user just downloaded from a website shortly before the DNS request was seen. And that's the kind of answers that this tool is really helpful with. These logs can, of course, be very detailed and they're could be a lot of logs and that's why the tool also supports filters to kind of focus in on the type of logs that you derive the best value from. And if you are a victim of the Dunex ransomware, there is a solution for you now in the form of a decryptor that was created by Avast. Uh, Dunex, this particular ransomware family, has uh, been around in various forms for about the last two years or so. The decryptor that uh, Avast came up with uh, does figure out the password that you then need to use in order to decrypt your files. There was some talk about that uh, Avast actually had this uh, decryptor for a while now. It sort of secretly provided it uh, to a customers before you kind of judge them for not making it public. Uh, the reason for them to make it only public now is that this ransomware family was still active. If they would have made the decryptor public, of course, they would have just slightly changed their algorithm and with that made that decryptor totally uh, useless by not making it public. They were able to actually at least help some people recovering their files. An application security company, Oligo, did uh, publish a detailed write-up uh, with uh, proof-of-concept exploits and additional details regarding multiple vulnerabilities in the PyTorch model server. PyTorch is a machine learning library that's, uh, of course, you know, very popular and hot these days with all the focus on AI and machine learning. And the PyTorch model server does allow you to essentially parallelize and scale some of these workloads. So this is code that is intentionally listening on the network for requests for essentially code to execute. And that's sort of what a lot of these vulnerabilities come down to. Much of this can be prevented by just uh, using the non-default configuration. Sadly, as so many similar systems, uh, this comes with fairly insecure default configuration. So if you do have uh, people in your organization that are working on machine learning and AI, certainly worthwhile reaching out and figuring out uh, how to secure their systems. There's currently a lot of rogue IT happening as uh, people are trying to figure out how to quickly sort of get into that game. And this blog post may be a good motivation and also provide sort of some hints and such as to, for example, demos or such that you may want to do in order to bring the point across why these systems need to be protected. And we got a couple of vulnerabilities that are worthwhile to mention. XM fixed a vulnerability that does allow an attacker to bypass any attachment inspection that you may have done by the mail server. So if you're trying, for example, to feed it to antivirus engines or such, the attacker may be able to bypass them. 
And security researcher Pierre Kim did release details regarding 40 vulnerabilities in Toshiba multifunction printers and 17 vulnerabilities in Sharp multifunction printers. Updates are available, have been available for a couple months now in some cases. Luckily, Pierre has waited until now to release details. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Remember, Microsoft Patch Tuesday coming up. More about that tomorrow. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.